Hello, hello, writers. I'm Kristen Kiefer, author of fantasy fiction and creative writing resources. And you are listening to the Well Storied Podcast, where I share insights, encouragement, and actionable advice designed to help you craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, always in 30 minutes or less, so you can get back to writing, of course. Ready for the show? Let's get talking. Hello, writers, and welcome or welcome back to the Well Story Podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Kiefer, and today is March 31st, 2017. Today's episode is titled How Fiction Writers Can Pen Strong Opening Lines, and if you'd like to read along as you listen in, simply visit well-storied.com slash opening lines. Now let's dive in. Whether you're writing the first line of your book or of one of its many chapters or scenes, penning opening lines can be tricky. You only have a sentence or two to hook readers, to grip their attention strongly enough that they'll allow you to draw them deeper into the heart of your story world. Opening lines are your bargaining chips, your siren songs, your bait. If you fail to capture readers' attention, then they might just set your story aside. Or, at the very least, find themselves struggling to care what happens next. No good, right? Fortunately, we can glean quite a bit of inspiration for this task by analyzing popular opening lines from literature. But first, how do opening lines capture readers' attention? In preparing this episode, I began to consider the many reasons why opening lines might grab readers' attention. Four particular reasons stood out. Firstly, opening lines pique readers' curiosity. Two, opening lines create an emotional connection with readers. Three, opening lines provide entertainment, often via humor. And four, opening lines provide shock factor. Curiosity seems to be the most common type of hook, and for good reason. By planting a question in readers' minds, authors encourage them to keep reading in search of answers. Take these lines, for example. Kel wore a very peculiar coat. From A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. 1984 by George Orwell. First the colors, then the humans. That's usually how I see things, or at least how I try. From The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. These opening lines ask questions like, why is the coat peculiar? And striking 13, how is that possible? And wait, is this narrator not human? What's going on here? Many popular opening lines in literature, while piquing curiosity, also hook readers with the use of humor, shock, or emotional connection. Take these additional lines for example. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. From Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins from Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, and late in the winter of my 17th year, my mother decided I was depressed, presumably because I rarely left the house, spent quite a lot of time in bed, read the same book over and over, ate infrequently, and devoted quite a bit of my abundant free time to thinking about death. From The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. While posing questions is a key component of successful opening lines, making an additional effort to captivate readers in other ways can lend to the strength of your hook. Next, let's talk about how strong opening lines set the scene. Mood is the atmosphere or vibe you'd like readers to feel when reading your book. Introducing mood early in each chapter, often within its opening lines, can help captivate readers by immersing them in the atmosphere of your story, that is, transporting them to another time and place. 
When penning opening lines throughout your book, consider the mood you'd like to convey. Do you want readers to feel a sense of hope or foreboding? Whimsy or terror? How about peace, trepidation, or adventure? Try distilling this atmosphere into just one or two descriptive lines. Often, writers use mood rather than curiosity to immerse readers in new chapters when existing conflict or tension remains unresolved. After all, one doesn't need to pique readers' interest when they're already tearing through the pages to find out what happens next. Take a look at how V.E. Schwab masters mood in this opening line. The city looked positively bleak, shrouded in the dying light, as if everything had been painted over with only black and white, an entire palette dampened to shades of gray. From A Gathering of Shadows, Chapter 5 Of course, not every new chapter needs to open with a strong descriptor. Writers most often employ this method when chapters open in new settings or when the mood shifts dramatically between scenes. Let's talk about crafting opening lines that pack a powerful punch. As I've often said, every aspect of your story must serve a purpose, and that includes its opening lines. The more an opening line can introduce or reveal to readers, the better. This may include character. There was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, C.S. Lewis. Theme. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Three, conflict. The shutters swinging in the storm winds were the only sign of her entry. Crown of Midnight, Sarah J. Maz. Four, setting. Ironically, since the attacks, the sunsets have been glorious. Angel Fall by Susan E. And five, world building. There is one mirror in my house. It is behind a sliding panel in the hallway upstairs. Our faction allows me to stand in front of it on the second day of every third month, the day my mother cuts my hair. Divergent by Veronica Roth. You can also introduce multiple elements in your opening lines, such as these examples do. Not for the first time, an argument had broken out over breakfast at number four Privet Drive, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Many years later, as he faced the firing squad, Colonel Aureliano Buendia was to remember that distant afternoon when his father took him to discover ice. 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez In my earliest memory, my grandfather is bald as a stone and he takes me to see the tigers. The Tiger's Wife by Taya Obret How do you choose which elements to feature in each opening line? Often it takes writing a scene to understand how best to introduce it. The best opening lines are typically honed in revision. Finally, let's talk about framing your opening line. With an understanding of how you'd like to hook readers in place, it's time to determine how you'll present this tantalizing bait. Will your opening line feature 1. Dialogue I've watched through his eyes, I've listened through his ears, and I tell you he's the one. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card 2. Action when he grabs Mama's wrist and yanks her toward the wall hanging like that, it must hurt. Bitter Blue by Kristen Cashor. 3. Internal Narrative The way I figure it, everyone gets a miracle. Paper Towns by John Green. 4. External Narrative When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday, with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien And 5. Description Stately, plump Buck Mulligan came from the stairhead, 
bearing a bowl of lather on which a mirror and a razor lay crossed. Ulysses by James Joyce No particular framework is better than another when it comes to presenting your opening line. In fact, you may enjoy writing different versions of your hook to see which is most effective at snagging readers' attention. Feeling overwhelmed by all the possibilities available to you? Remember that opening lines are often honed in revision, like any other aspect of a good story. Strong hooks require thought and care, and penning them is a skill that's often developed in time. Consider analyzing the opening lines in your favorite books for inspiration. Then go ahead and dive in. You'll never know what incredible opener you'll create until you try. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Podcast Writer. I hope you found it helpful to your writing journey. If so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a new episode and to give the podcast a quick rating or review. Doing so goes a long way toward helping the podcast reach new writers and lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm creating. You can also give me a shout out directly on Instagram at Kristen underscore Kiefer. For additional guidance as you work to craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, be sure to head on over to www.well-storied.com, where I share blog posts, workbooks, e-courses, and other helpful resources for writers. Again, that's w-e-l-l-s-t-o-r-i-e-d.com. Thank you again for tuning into today's episode, my friend. Until next time, happy writing!